This is Terrell Ross with the Mosaic Nation Tour Across America. And I just learned that the man who planned the Pan Am 103 bombing, I just learned that he passed away. And I thought I would take a few minutes to share with some of my friends and family about one of the people that was on that plane. She was my next door neighbor. Her name was Suzanne Miazga. Suzanne was the first person that I met when I went to Syracuse, when I went there. Uh, as a graduate student in 1987, I didn't know one person. I had just gotten out of the army, and my twin brother had just passed away and died of AIDS. So I was kind of in a really big transition in my life, and she was such a wonderful friend to have. Sometimes we would uh, we we lived about two miles away from the main campus, so sometimes we would just walk to campus and back. It was really interesting because everybody thought that we were dating. And, um, and we weren't, and, and it was kind of weird because they couldn't believe that two people uh, like us could just have a really good platonic friendship. And so, um, you know, we would do all kinds of things together. We would, um, we would go outside in the snow sometimes and make snow angels. Um, I remember one time um, I just bought a Stevie, One, St Stevie Winwood album, and I was playing it. And as I said, she was my next door neighbor, and it was I was playing it so loud that she could hear it. And she goes, "Are you?" And she called me. She goes, "Are you playing Stevie Winwood?" I go, "Yeah." So she goes, "Oh, I love Stevie Winwood." So I said, "Well, come on over." So uh, she heard it, and we and we I just rem what I remembered is that we danced, and you know I thought we were only going to dance for one song, and we must have danced for like five or six songs, and we never said a word. We did, it was just one of those weird moments. Um, we had this great synergy together. You know, every now and then in life, you meet somebody that just gets you and you get them. And that was what we had. And uh, the other thing about her, I remember she saw the movie Dirty Dancing and oh my God, she just fell in love with Patrick Swayze. Oh my God, she couldn't, she wouldn't stop talking about that movie. And then, you know, uh, there was the tragedy. And all I can say is, is that uh, I remember the night uh, when I heard, because my phone kept ringing and I was, it was right in the middle of uh, finals and it was just before Christmas about, it was the week before Christmas and it was right before finals and my phone kept ringing and I, and I didn't want to answer my phone and I don't even think we had caller ID then. And so uh, I didn't know why it kept ringing and then finally, you know, and I, I had remembered uh, hearing something about a plane crash and I remembered while I was, it, I was in my sleep and it hit me what happened. And I was like, oh my God, I bet you that that was the plane that Suzanne was on. And sure enough, it was. Well, the thing is, the thing to remember is, is that 270 people died. Um, and Syracuse, I think, had, we had we had 30 something students that were there. And there was another campus that had other students there. And 11 people from Lockersby, uh, 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 Lockerby died too. So it was just a devastating news. And um, what I remember the most is the media and how invasive they were and how they wouldn't let us mourn on our own like they kept putting cameras in our face and and it it, it just really turned me off you know and i i was i was in the syracuse uh, si newhouse school of public communications and it it really you know made me feel bad about my own profession you know i was i was very embarrassed at their lack of uh sensitivity they were very insensitive to the needs of the people who were grieving. So that was that was my memory. And then of course the memory of her mother um, who just lost her beautiful daughter. Um, so one of the things that I did is that I, I decided to go on a pilgrimage and I went to Lockersby uh, several years ago now and it was awesome you know, to go there and I met a few people. I, unfortunately I went there on a Sunday so I didn't get to meet as many people as I wanted but it's just a beautiful memorial that they have because, um, you know, they will always be connected with that event. And uh, as I said, they lost uh, 11 people as well. When I, when I think about the legacy of what happened, the, the first thing I, I have to say is that I just think it was a blessing for me to know Suzanne Miazga. Um, she's one of the best friends I've ever had. Um, I, I would say that we were soulmates. Um, I think we understood each other in a very special way that just doesn't happen very often in life. The other, the other legacy <clears throat> is that um, the, the bombing, I mean, you know, when you, you have to realize that a person and some people planned this, you know, they plotted to bomb and kill innocent people. 
And what it's done for me is it's given me empathy for all of the innocent people that die in the world. Um, Mrs. Miazga had to bury her daughter, her 20-something-year-old daughter, her sweet daughter who never hurt a person in her life. But I haven't gone to the memorial that's at Syracuse University, so I'm very, very excited that sometime in the next uh, six months I will be heading to Syracuse with my cameras and, uh, and I will complete my pilgrimage. And I'm actually going to do a short documentary on Suzanne and the aftermath uh, or the effect of the Pan Am Flight 103. So anyway, uh, thank you for listening and uh, look for uh, my documentary on that sometime in the next year. Thank you. Bye.